Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for our witnesses for being here. Our, our nation's kind of at a tipping point. I mean, we're nearly 34 and a half trillion, or actually we're over 34 and a half trillion dollars in debt. And I, I count public and intergovernmental debt, not just the public, because Nobody's going to say that they're not going to pay Social Security recipients or not going to pay the military retirement. So intergovernmental debt is debt that has to be paid by the taxpayers. We're currently, as the chairman said, borrowing $95,000 a second, roughly. Uh, in 2023, we, the debt increased by $2.6 trillion in that 365-day period. And we're on track to be over $36 billion by a year from now. Uh, and it's irresponsible spending, really, that's impaired the national's in cred credibility and, and starting to affect the national security now, and in addition to saddling the next generations with uh, the huge burden of debt. Um, we were elected to find legislative solutions to the debt crisis in this country, and that means we need to rein in reckless government spending and return to regular order. I want to just mention that... Um, you know, we haven't passed all 12 appropriations bills on time uh, since 1996. Uh, it's both Republicans and Democrats at fault. Um, omnibus spending and even minibus spending, um, although a step in the right direction, continues to keep this body in a never-ending spiral of spending more money uh, with, with these bloated spending bills. And um, on our side of the aisle, my colleagues and I tend to try to balance a budget in 10 years. Um, we, we focused on that with the Budget Committee and worked there. But since I've been here in the last uh, almost seven years, we can't, it's more and more difficult to accomplish that in a 10-year window. Yesterday's budget released by President Biden just pushes us further down the wrong path. I mean, if we think our debts now, if we follow the plan proposed by the President, uh, which it even includes tax increases, our national debt would be $52.7 trillion in 10 years. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to submit for the record my op-ed entitled uh, Three Ways to Treat America's Debt Pandemic. Uh, in it, I outline that's not just our national debt, uh, but that's a problem, but that household debt has also reached a high of $17.5 so this old. year. Families are struggling to pay their debt uh, because of the inflation and because of taking on credit card and other debt is only exacerbating that national fi fiscal crisis. Dr. Falkender, it, it seems that there are correlations between personal finances and our national financial, uh, fiscal situation. Uh, the, the inflation uh, from Bidenomics uh, has created a troubling economy, economy for working families. They've taken on more debt and we're facing higher interest rates, while at the same time the federal government's spending more that's bringing in and having to figure out how to pay uh, higher interest rates on its debt. What are some of the public policies that have caused this, and how do you think, or is there a relationship between personal and, and uh, national finances? Sure. So if we think about the economy that was in place in January of 2021, we were seeing a, a nice recovery from the pandemic. We had recovered by middle of 2021. We had returned to both the economic output prior to the pandemic and the level of employment. And yet at the beginning of the Biden administration, an additional $2 trillion of fiscal stimulus was thrown into an economy that was largely already recovered. And so as a result, we saw inflation here in the United States take off much faster than elsewhere around the world, coupled with an administration who singularly focused on reducing the ability of the United States to be energy independent, to take energy resources offline. We saw that the energy sector didn't recover until 2023, despite the rest of the economy in 21. So all of those things, stimulated demand at a time that we were curtailing the ability of the U.S. economy to fulfill that demand, the natural result is inflation. Now, the Federal Reserve then came in late to the party in order to try to curtail some of the excess, you know, the really low interest rate environment that was in place. And in order to catch up, they, they increased interest rates extremely quickly. We saw mortgage interest rates go from about 3 to about 7%. So not only are American households now facing 30% higher energy prices, 20% higher food prices, but the, the interest rate on a 30-year mortgage has, as I said, taken a $250,000 mortgage from about $1,000 a month principal and interest payment to over $1,600. And the least, the lowest income amongst us are the ones that are hit, hard, hit hardest by it because shelter, energy, and food comprise a much larger portion, portion of their consumption than any other demographic. Yeah, yeah it's, it, I'm just so concerned about, uh, as you mentioned, inflation is such a, a burden for so many individuals, and, and uh, we, we've got to get that under control. We have to have good fiscal policy and not 
uh, excessive spending over our revenue that, that brings that in. And speaking about revenue, I just want to say one quick comment, Mr. Chairman, is that I do want to correct the record on Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. I mean, we have consistently uh, brought in more tax revenue than what the Congressional Budget Office estimated after the, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was passed. Uh, in 2023, we saw almost $300 billion more in tax revenue than what had been estimated by the CBO. In 2022, it was over $900 billion. And in 2020, it was over uh, 200, roughly 280. So the, the revenue has come in because of the economy moving. And uh, that's one of the things that we've got to keep in mind as we look at having good pro-growth policies. Thank you, and I Thank yield you, back. Sir.